Hey friends, this is Rick Renner reading the July 2024 teaching letter. Dear friends, greetings in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. We have so much happening at Renner Ministries right now. This month, we're celebrating Christmas in July. We're offering a 25% discount on all Renner products in our online store. So if there are any resources you've been wanting to order, July 8 to 31st will be a great time to do it. So visit renner.org store to celebrate Christmas in July with us this year. And I'm also so excited to tell you that we're getting closer to the release date of my new book, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. My editorial team and I worked very hard on this book with the goal of unlocking unanswered hidden mysteries from the past, and we're just thrilled with the outcome. And I believe you will be too. My friend Jimmy Evans said, Rick Renner's Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood is a breathtaking journey through the pages of Scripture and the records of history. His meticulous research and profound spiritual insights bring the ancient world to life, revealing the startling parallels between the days of Noah and our own time. This book is a wake-up call for the church, urging us to be vigilant and prepared for the Lord's return. Rick Renner's work is a deposit of wisdom and revelation, offering hope and encouragement to believers as we navigate the challenges of the last days. Thank you, Brother Jimmy. I'm humbled by his kind words of endorsement and his vote of confidence. We worked very hard, and I'm very pleased with the way this book turned out. But... Jesus' endorsement means more to me than anyone else's, and in my heart, I feel the Lord is pleased with this book. If you haven't ordered your copy yet, go to renner.org to take advantage of the special limited-time pre-release discount. We're also offering an additional discount to anyone purchasing six or more copies because I really believe you'll want to share this book with others. Denise and I, and our whole team are honored that you support and give to this ministry. Earlier this morning, before I ever lifted my head from my pillow, I stopped to pray for our partners, and that means you. This is what I do every morning. In fact, I pray for our partners multiple times every day. Every time I sit in front of a camera in our studio, every time I sit down to write a book, and every time I stand to teach the Bible, I stop to thank God for our partners whose giving is so vital for all of it to happen. And I really pray for you, my friend and my partner. You're with us all the time. And you're truly helping us fulfill our mandate to bring the trusted teaching of God's Word to people around the world. And for this, I really want to say thank you. But today, I want to turn to the words Jesus spoke to His disciples about the end times in Matthew 24. And in that discourse, Jesus made a very significant statement. In Matthew 24, 37, Jesus said, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What did Jesus mean by this statement? Was He prophesying that there will be an exact replication of events that occurred in the time frame preceding the flood? What activities should we expect to see? And do we see any of these things happening today? Well, Jesus was telling us that just before He returns, the earth will experience some type of bizarre replication of many of the events that were occurring in the days preceding the flood. But before we dive in, I want to encourage you with this. No matter how bad things get in the world around us, as we cling to Christ, we will see the same God who rescued Noah and his righteous family come to the aid and defense of the body of Christ today. Jesus gave us a glimpse into the future, not so that we would live in fear of the God of this world, who of course is the devil, but so that when we see these things come to pass, we will lift up our heads knowing that our redemption really is drawing nigh. But in this month's letter, and in August and September's letters, I want to present to you a list of six major events that occurred before the flood to consider how they are happening in the world again today. So let's begin. 
six major occurrences in the days of Noah that are outlined in Genesis 6. Number one, according to Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, there was an exploding population in the days before the flood. Genesis 6, 1 specifically states that in the days that preceded the flood, men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Historians who have studied the world's population believe the human population was exponentially exploding on the earth in the time frame just before the flood. And it's likely that by the time of Noah, there were already several million people on the earth. And again, in Matthew 24, 37, Jesus said, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Therefore, we must ask, is the world today experiencing a population explosion as occurred in the days before the flood? So I decided to study what's happened in the world population since the time of Jesus' birth 2,000 years ago to see if we really are experiencing a population explosion as occurred before the flood. I'm showing you the following information to help you understand there really has been massive population growth from the time of Jesus' birth to the present. And the only other time such a population explosion ever occurred was in the time frame just before the flood. Listen to these interesting facts. In 1 AD, when Jesus was born approximately 2,000 years ago, the entire global population is estimated to have been roughly 300 million. But from 1 AD to 1500, during the next 1500 years, the global population grew very slowly for several reasons. Among them being widespread illnesses and plagues that ravaged major population centers and poorer health in general. Then in the 1700s, mm, that's the 18th century and during the Industrial Revolution, during that time, the world saw rapid population growth as families began to have more children and more babies survived their first years. Then in the 1800s, growth of the population finally reached 1 billion people. Wow. In 1958, over the next 100 years from the late 19th century, the human population doubled so that by 1958, that's the year I was born, there were approximately 3 billion people on the earth. The second half of the 20th century brought along some additional exorbitant growth. 1976, that's the year I enrolled as a student at the university. And that year, the global population had skyrocketed from 3 billion in 1958 to more than 4 billion, to be exact, 4,142,505,882,000. That was the number by 1976. And then from 1976 to the present, the world population doubled again. And today there are more than 8 billion people comprising the global population. And the future projections tell us that at the current rate of growth, it is projected the world's population will reach 9.7 billion by 2050 and 10.4 billion by the year 2100. Currently, the global population is growing at an average of 1.5% annually. So to be sure, this present booming period of growth is unprecedented in human history, except for in the time frame that preceded the flood. But let's see what else was happening before the flood. Point number two, there was gross sexual perversion. Genesis chapter six, verse two states, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all that they chose. The phrase sons of God in this verse refers to fallen mutinous angels who abandoned their God assigned positions during the time of Jared, who was Adam's great, great, great grandson. And as these beings came down to earth and sexually mingled with mortal women, the sexual depravity and perversity raged, reaching an intensity in the days before the flood that would be impossible to overstate. In fact, Peter and Jude write vividly about these nefarious events in 1 Peter 2, 4 and Jude verse 6. But the Bible goes on to say that in the days before the flood, 
This is Genesis 6, 11 and 12. The earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. The word corrupt or a form of this word is used three times in this verse, and each time it is a translation of an original word that depicts something that's been blemished, marred, or ruined. This word is used throughout the Old Testament and seems to be inseparably linked with sexual sin and perversity. Thus, this blemishing and marring that was occurring was initiated and accelerated by the fallen angels engaging in forbidden sexual relations with earthly women. And it became so pervasive that eventually all flesh, even the animals, with the exception of those who eventually boarded the ark with Noah and his family, became contaminated through rampant sexual perversity. We can glean from Genesis 6 and the writings of early Christian leaders that the fallen angels unthinkably taught sexual passions to cause humans to veer from God's original design for sex. These passions included fornication, adultery, homosexuality, bestiality, and every evil act of sexual deviance imaginable. And again, in Matthew 24, 37, Jesus says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, so we must ask. Is the world today experiencing gross sexual perversion as it occurred in the days before the flood? Without question, sexual perversity in society today is unparalleled as sexual taboos are being thrown to the wind and what was once considered blasphemous, degenerate and deviant is now accepted and even celebrated. It's unthinkable, but the sex trafficking and Porn industries combined generate nearly $250 billion annually and continue to exponentially grow. Moral and sexual confusion have reached such an apex that many are confused about whether they're male or female. In fact, there are multitudes that are so mixed up they actually embrace the nonsense that there are dozens of genders from which to choose. Confusion is so pandemic that there are even growing numbers of people who believe they are of a different age or race than what is biologically true of them. Moreover, there's an increasing number of individuals who allege that they are animals, a delusion that has the capacity to ultimately lead to bestiality and to people marrying animals, which we may see in the not so distant future. All of this is indicative of a deeply delusional societal state or condition. It wasn't so long ago that such kinds of thinking and behaving would have been viewed as mental illness, but now these behaviors and lifestyles are progressively being legalized and normalized. And rather than treat these deviances as the insanity they are, courts, educational institutions, fields of medicine, and science are unthinkably endorsing and promoting them, often prosecuting and punishing those who stick to God's prescribed moral values and who refuse to bend to the spirit of the age. This delusional thinking is so prevalent that now, to be admitted to universities, many incoming students are required to sign a document of agreement with new policies of diversity and inclusion as a prerequisite for acceptance. Imagine, to be accepted into many universities, young Christian believers are being required to either compromise what they believe, modify themselves to fit in with the new moral agenda, or forego higher education. At this point, it must be stated that while we're called to be compassionate and loving toward everyone, we're not called to bend to such delusion in our beliefs and values. It's important to recognize that only seducing spirits interacting with human beings could convince intelligent people to embrace such absurdity. The moral compass has been skewed so far that now outrageously dressed, cosmetic riddled men are regularly invited to performative events for children and to participate in book reading events for them in public libraries. This is a demonic attempt to desensitize the youngest generation to what is morally right and wrong and to cause children to tolerate and embrace alternative lifestyles that the Bible condemns as abominations. This is the social condition 
in which we're living today. The fact is, we're living in a time when minds are being inundated with false information and there is almost an across the board celebration of immorality. This last day's attack is occurring as seducing spirits that are bent on modifying the collective mind of society, are interacting with humans and work to create a way of thinking that is free from moral restraint. This modification process has spread its tentacles into every sector of society so that now many who even grew up in church are becoming affected and are slowly changing what they believe about issues that should be set in stone. This insidious shift in sexual morals has evolved over several decades and has occurred so gradually and has been so well disguised as progressive thinking, it's become more and more palatable to the masses. This progressive shift has also successfully intimidated many who see that moral values and society with them are running amok, but they are so stigmatized by the new narrative as being hateful and bigoted toward those that are caught up in the moral haze that they remain quiet about their faith and about the word and the power of God that could set those captives free. Indeed, Satan's agenda of deception and intimidation has stepped up in scope and momentum in this end time season. But to anyone with a sound mind and spiritual eyes to see, it's clear that dark demonic forces are working full force to numb society and to lead our youngest members down a treacherous, immoral path. This level of sexual perversion we are experiencing worldwide is unprecedented in human history, except for in the time frame that preceded the flood. The enemy will always try to push you into a state of fear over the disconcerting state of our world. But if you've made Jesus your Savior and Lord, you've not been given the spirit of fear. You've been given the power and the presence of God to accompany you in every circumstance you will ever encounter. You can read that in Romans 8, 9, and 11, 2 Corinthians 6, 16, and 2 Timothy 1, 7. You have the greater one living inside you, and he will never leave you. That is promised to us. In Joshua 1, 9, Deuteronomy 31, 8, John 14, 18, and Hebrews 13, 5, it means you are safe in him. God is not in the business of scaring us, but he is in the business of preparing us so we can safeguard ourselves and those we love. If we know these things are going to happen, then we must be diligent to fill our hearts, minds, and eyes with the word of God and to influence our young ones in such a way that they will not allow this evil to ever become a part of their lives. If you have family or friends who are already affected, it's not too late for them. God's power can turn it around. If you want us to pray with you, please reach out to us and we'll release a torrent of prayer for God to touch that person you love. But in next month's letter, I want to share two more amazing points to show you that what was happening before the flood is already starting to be replicated in our time. For example, there was horrible demonic activity before the flood, and I will show you how demonic activity is again increasing today. I will also show you how the emergence of transhumanism is a replication of events that caused God to send the flood in the days of Noah. Oh, I have so much more I want to share. But before I close, I want to remind you that if you have a prayer request of any kind, and if you would like us to prayerfully and scripturally agree for God to meet that need, give us a call or send us an email. I realize you can pray by yourself, but it would be our honor to pray and encourage you and we'll keep it confidential. Simply call us at 1-800-742-5593 or send an email to prayer at renner.org. The moment we hear from you, we will begin to pray forcefully and with faith. And according to Jeremiah 33, 3, God will hear us, answer us, and do something mighty for you. I believe there's a miraculous answer with your name on it waiting for you right now. Thank you for taking the time to read my letter. Be sure to look for the next one in August. Denise and I, our family, and our team love you, and we thank God for you. 
where your brother and sister friends and partners in Jesus Christ, Rick and Denise Renner, along with Paul, Philip, Joel, their families, and our entire ministry team.